Hello everyone, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. Today we're going to talk about a very important characteristic of BJT transistors. I'm talking about gain. Gain is a characteristic specific to BJT transistors, regardless of whether they are PNP or NPN. This characteristic is called gain, or HFE, or beta. And we can measure it using our multimeter. When we select that scale, the word HFE will appear on the multimeter screen. This gain characteristic is very important in the areas of audio amplifiers or signal amplifiers. However, it is also important in other areas to be able to understand how our transistors will work. And on this occasion, we are going to learn how to measure it with our multimeter or with another instrument, and even in a practical way in a circuit. This, and more in this video. So without further ado, let's watch the video. Very good. Now we are going to measure the gain of our transistors with our multimeter. To do this, we'll set our multimeter to the HFE scale. And on the screen we should see HFE, or beta. If you look closely, our multimeter on that scale tells us to select the transistor based on whether it's an NPN type or a PNP type. There, we can see different holes indicating emitter, base, collector, and emitter. Therefore, we need to know if our transistor is NPN or PNP. And we also need to know the pinout, collector, base, and emitter. In the case of BC547, that would be the distribution. In the case of the tip 31C, this one here, well, it would be base, collector, and emitter. The pinout isn't always the same. Therefore, you need to know the pin order of your transistor. Now that we've identified the pins and know their NPN, we can place them in the holes where the pins must align. For example, this one would go like this, collector, base, and emitter. We press it in a little. And there we have the gain, which would be 420. Or rather, for 122. So this one would have a gain of 422. However, let's test it with another transistor of the same model. This one here. We can see that it's 327. That means there will be differences between one transistor and another regardless of whether they're the same model. That's why it's very important in audio amplifiers to choose transistors with similar gains. To ensure the resulting signals are symmetrical, meaning there are no distortions. Now, in order to measure other, much larger transistors, we have to use cables. Since these cannot fit into the holes, or are very difficult to insert, In this case, I will use this accessory. And there we can see the gain, which is 208. In the same way, you can find the gain of other, larger transistors. However, there are also other instruments that will allow you to obtain the gain of your transistors. 
I'm talking about this instrument, which will allow us to measure the gain of transistors. So let's see how much gain the TIP 31C has. We press it. And we see that the gain is 192. And here we have 208, which is very similar. Let's look at the other transistor. And we have 396, which must be this one here. And in that way, you can easily obtain the gain using this instrument. Now, what is the gain effect? Well, let's see in this example how the gain would work. Here we have an NPN transistor, in which we have two resistors, one at the base and another at the collector. And here we have the emitter. The BJT transistor operates based on the current entering through its base. That is, there is a base current. If this base current is 1 milliampere, what would be the current flowing through the collector? Well, this current would be equal to the base current, multiplied by the gain, or beta. That is, the collector current would be equal to. If the base current were 1 milliampere, it would be amplified by a gain factor. Let's say 208 or 422, or 327. Therefore, in the smallest transistors, for example the 422, our collector current could reach up to 422 milliamps. That's the work done by the gain. Therefore, more gain means more collector current. And as you just saw, the higher the power of your transistor, the lower the gain it will have. And the gain can also vary from one transistor to another. That's why it's very important to choose transistors in certain areas. Okay, now let's see how we can obtain the gain without any instruments. Let's see that. Okay, now we're going to obtain the gain of our transistors without using any measuring instruments. For that, we have to build this circuit, in which we see that we have a transistor and two resistors. The resistors have to have very different values. That is, one of them has to have a very low value, and the other a very high value. In this case, we're going to use a 1 kilom resistor as the collector resistor. And as for the base resistor, we need to place a resistor with a very high value. It could be 100 kilohms, or it could be 220, 470, or 680, or even 1 megam. In this case, we're going to use a 680 kilohm resistor. Okay, once you've defined the resistor values, you can use them with any of the transistors. We'll need to measure the voltage across the base resistor with our multimeter. And we'll need to measure the voltage across the collector resistor. With these voltages, we can calculate the current flowing through each resistor. In other words, we'll be able to calculate the base current. And with these two currents, we can calculate the gain. Since the collector current is equal to the gain multiplied by the base current. And from this, we get the formula for the gain, or beta. This will be equal to the collector current divided by the base current. Therefore, it's necessary to obtain both currents. So, let's take that measurement with the multimeter. Great, we now have the circuit assembled, as you can see. There we have the 1 kilom resistor, the 680 ohm resistor, 
whose actual value in this case is 696 kilohms, and the BC547 transistor. In this case, we are using a 12 volt power supply. Now we will measure the voltage across the base resistor. In this case, it is 11.6 volts at the base resistor. The voltage across the base resistor is 11.6 volts. Now, the voltage across the collector resistor. It would be 6.7 volts. With this, we can calculate the current from both the base and the collector. So the base current would be equal to 11.6 volts divided by 696 kilohms. This would give us 0.0166 milliamps. The collector current would be equal to 6.7 volts divided by 1 kilo. This would be equal to 6.7 milliamps. Therefore, the gain would be equal to 6.7 milliamps divided by 0.0166 milliamps. This would be equal to a gain of 403. Therefore, that would be the gain of our BC547. However, this needs to be confirmed with other instruments. Let's confirm it with this instrument and see if they are the same. And as we can see, the gain is 420, and the calculated value is 403, which is very close to the value given by the instrument. So, in this way, you can find the gain of any transistor. Therefore, an instrument is not necessary to calculate the gain. Okay guys, that's all for now. Now, don't forget that if you like the video, a like really helps the channel. See you in the next video. Bye bye.